Well, if you're an accountant, the new year starts in July, or well, the 1st of July. If you're, a, if you're a normal person, the new year starts on the 1st of January because that's the actual, technically the new year. But for an almond grower, this feels like the new year because we've got some beautiful blossoms happening and this just means the start of another season. So here I go again. So this is the moment when a bloke checks out the flowers, sits here being hopeful, thinking, man, it's a long way between here and putting some money in the bank, but a lot of money goes out the door before we get to the banking part. But the girls are out flying. We've had a bit of rain the last couple of days, so the ladies have been quite sleepy and hiding in their little boxes. I came out here the other day when it was about, I think it was 10 degrees, and I saw one little antenna out the front of the box going, I'm not going out there, it's too bloody cold. So, which is fair, because they're all stay at home keeping their babies warm. Today it's got the sun shining, the bees are buzzing. Oh, there's a hope for the future. I love this time of year. Mm. It's an interest, it's very powerful, the almond blossom smell. If you've never smelt almond blossom, you should nip out to California if you're in the USA, or perhaps sneak up to the Riverland and have a check this shit out, because it's pretty incredible. And it doesn't last very long, so you better be quick. Mind you, just to reiterate, don't head to California just right now because there would be any blossom anywhere because they're, I think they're harvesting-ish or nearly harvesting because they're, you guys are the upside down. Or oh, we're upside down maybe. Anyway, either way, we're on the different ends of the system. So we're in winter, you're in summer, or in, I think you're at the end of summer kind of thing. Anyway, don't go for a drive to California to see the armour blossom because it ain't there at the minute. So check your catalogues. But if you're in Australia, you can nip up to the Riverland and check it out or... Yeah, anyway, somewhere where they got them. But I'm digressing because this is exciting for me because this is I'm looking at the tree and I'm thinking, well, obviously not all those flowers are going to set. Otherwise, the tree will fall down and they won't have any room for any leaves. So that would be no good and you get nothing the next year. But it's looking pretty promising. Check these girls out. They're getting all the pollen. The other day I was doing a bit of pruning and I found out how much nectar can be in an almond blossom too. It was all running down the back of my neck. So that's a bad option. <laughs> and the bees were unimpressed, so I had to put my pruning away until after the blossom, which is technically not really acceptable, but I've just got some old dead wood I'm chopping out, so. I don't know, sometimes the time just runs away, and it just says, and it says, ha, oh, tell you what, maybe I need an extra me. Do you reckon? No, hell, the world couldn't put up with one more of me, could it? One of me's enough. Very good little ladies. Ah. And we have popped over to the other row, we can see the other variety that's just starting. And it's interesting because the almond blossom takes a while to get along. Now, this is actually a different variety, of course. And so they have just got it pink bud stage. The lovely wife's out giving them a bit of a spray so we keep all the healthiness happening. Just a little bit of fungicide so it doesn't actually get infected. But you know what? I reckon a bloke should be pretty happy. It's like, it's like walking in the snow. We don't get any snow here in the Riverland, but if you go for a bit of a wander over to this tree over here in a minute, you feel like you're in the snow. I wonder if I could build a snowman out of almond flakes. I don't think you're going to be able to pick up enough stuff to make a snowman. That'd take me hours. Oh, God. Apparently, I'm supposed to have a go at making a snowman, but you might have to, we'd have to play that diddle 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 music because that could take me a while and I haven't really got time today. But I reckon it looks like snow. The bees reckon it looks like something really cool to eat. Eventually, they'll all be in a bag and you'll get to eat some, so. You know, in Mother Nature, amazing. We get to feed the bees, we get to feed the people, and we get to look at something beautiful. Tell you what, I love being alive. Now, if you're not 100% sure what's going on with the flowers, I'm sure you could ask your kid because they've probably been at school studying flowers. But ultimately in a flower, you've got some pollen and you've got some boy pollen and some girl pollen. And the girl pollen is on this particular flower and the boy pollen from the other tree has to make it to this flower. Otherwise, it's not going to have a nut. So guess what happens? You've got to get some bees to go and get the pollen to bring that pollen from that tree over to this tree. So then we get some almonds. So hence why I'm a beekeeper, because otherwise you haven't got no bees, you've got no nuts. 
don't think about that too hard because that's a bit awkward anyway anyway so the cool thing about it is and inside here as well there's some little nectar to keep the girls healthy so they can have a bit of a feed on some nectar and they're in here nosing around here's one of the workers here at the minute she's having a go whoop she's saying hello and so apparently the interesting thing is though for the most part the pollination by the bees is just accidental because they've kind of gone from this pollen tree the actual other pollinator tree to this tree on the way home and so they get a bit of pollen stuck to them and i don't know but i think mother nature is pretty bloody incredible the interesting thing is did the bees develop before the trees and then the trees wanted to use the bees to get pollinated or did the trees develop and then the bees got organized and use use the resource it's a whole chicken and the egg saga isn't it because i'm not really sure maybe it all happened at the same time but it's got me baffled and you know what ultimately i don't care as long as it works that's all i know today so it doesn't really matter, but you could ponder that question and cause all sorts of excitement across the internet. Who knows, did the almond tree decide to create something that the bees would like? Or did the bees turn up and the trees decided to do something to feed the bees? I don't know. It's a pondering question. I don't know how good your eyes are, but these are the little girly bits, the little stamens. And right on the end of this particular little flower is all the little pollen bits. And if you tickle her, she's feeling good. So the bees come along, give her a little tickle, and they collect that little bit of pollen, and at the bottom of the flower, there is a bit of nectar as well, which is a nice sweet stuff, so it gives the girls a bit of energy to fly back home again. And they take that pollen, and they go back home, and they mix it with a bit of nectar, and they rub it all together, and then they eat it themselves, which is called bee bread, or they feed it to their babies to make more bees, and that's the whole point of the exercise. So it's a win-win situation. We're gonna breed up some bees, to get some better honey, because almond honey is pretty ordinary really, but citrus honey, which is after this, is and eucalyptus honey and all of that stuff. So it's a win-win, but don't tell the almond growers, because they, they pay us to turn up, so don't tell them. So here's the other end of the analogy. You can start having a look at how the girls are going, what pollen they're bringing back. Of course, you don't want to try this without your bee suit on. It could get a bit toey this time of year. <laughs> For the most part, the ladies look like they're going fairly well. These girls were having a bit of a struggle before we brought them back here, so they've actually rallied pretty good, I reckon. Now, the ongoing saga, of course, with almond growers and beekeepers is about where the hell you should put them. Now we used, to, I used to have the bees, you know, put around the whole orchard. I've only got 50 acres, so you don't get too carried away. If you've got 50,000 hectares, well, then that's a whole nother ball game. So this is, this is just for a smaller area. I mean, if you're massive, I don't know. You'd probably got to have another game plan. My conversion happened here about five years ago when I had an old time beekeeper turn up and he must have been 80 or 90. I don't know. He was still pretty robust, but he wasn't, he wasn't a spring chicken. That's for sure. And he said to me, why the hell do you almond growers want to put all your bees scattered through your orchard so they're in the shade and all the rest of it? That's just madness. He said, put them somewhere in the sun where it's nice and warm. And that's why God gave them wings so they can fly to where the flowers are. And what's more, on the way back, they're probably more likely to do some pollination by accident on the way home because I think, oh, I could just stuff a bit more in me blooming pollen sack on the way back. So that's where I've ended up. I've ended up pretty much finding a warm spot to sit the bees, a bit like I would when I'm working any other site and they'll, um, they'll fly from there and they'll collect the honey and the nectar and the pollen that we want. And there you are. And then you get some, the bees are happy, the almonds are happy. Hell, everybody should be happy. But that's a whole nother controversy yet to be had. <laughs> Sitting here pondering the journey of life, listening to my little ladies work their asses off. And the girls up there are getting amongst it. The flowers are flowering. But I was just thinking, it's a very interesting thing, you know, history. Because almonds have got a very long history. They come from the Middle East and they've scattered across the world. And all the information that we've collected about almond growing has been written down. But what did our ancestors do before they could write things down? They made up sensible stories that they could remember. 
and they would tell each other their stories and they'd sit around campfires at night and they'd pass down the stories through their generations and also they made them into nursery rhymes so as they could actually remember them and they could tell their kids. So the interesting thing that happens to you when you're a new granddad, you start having a bit of a look at what the history of nursery rhymes is. Man, I am not sure. There's several of those nursery rhymes I'm not telling my granddaughter. And if you want to know why I'm not going to tell her, you scoot over our new show and you'll find out for yourself.